Hello, I'm Oskar Sherlief and you're watching the news from Kazakhstan. The new fourth package of documents exposing Timur Kulibayev was sent to law enforcement agencies, ruling party and parliament. It is a rhetorical question at this point whether officials will show any interest this time. Nevertheless, there's a little doubt that the pattern of sent material sets the tone of political life in Kazakhstan. Mukhtar Ablyazov has published new documents exposing the deputy chairman of the Samruk Kazana Fund, Timur Kulibayev. Interfax News Agency reports that this time the banker talks about the last false sale of shares of Mangistao Munai Gas Oil Company, when Kazmunai Gas concealed from taxation about $2 billion through the use of a fake transaction format. Kazakh experts have not yet commented on the situation, while politician Vladimir Kozlov believes he knows why. Timur Kulibayev's name prevents people who have something to lose from speaking about the situation. But I think they need to wake up already. According to Kozlov, Ablazov receives documents from people close to the authorities. The newspaper Svoboda Slova put forward a version that this could be the president's ex-son-in-law, Rahat Aliyev. Meanwhile, political analyst Dosim Satpaev notes a certain trend. The loyalty some elite groups have shown to the bureaucratic establishment in the past is weakening. Jackish of arrest and serious conflicts with Ablazov have shaken the trust of big business representatives in the state authorities and groups that influence the decision-making process. Right now, business demonstrates some loyalty, but it won't be so at the X hour during the transfer of power. This is already the fourth letter with documents Mukhtar Ablazov addressed to the Parliament, Security Forces, Ruling Party and country's leadership. Officially, only the Financial Police is reviewing the case at the moment, although there is still no word about the investigation of activities of the President's other son-in-law. Mukhtar Ablazov keeps sending his information over, but the number of outlets ready to distribute it inside the country is dropping. Printing houses across the entire country refused to publish the newspaper Golos Respubliki. The editorial board believes the media is pressed purely for political reasons. Now reporters are planning to protect their rights in court and sue senior officials. Independent newspaper Golos Respubliki, the voice of the Republic, is planning to sue the government and the president's administration of the country. Reporters are confident that top officials from Astana are to blame for their troubles, as all printing houses in Kazakhstan refuse to print their publication. The last to refuse was Karaganda Printing. Interestingly, the sites have already signed an agreement and printed the first issue. By then, the director of the pretty house was invited for a talk to the city administration, and the agreement was immediately cancelled. Later, some unidentified people ordered news vendors to stop selling the already out issues, although meanwhile the authorities have no official base for these actions. It looks like there is a total chaos there because I am the chief editor of Gold Respublica and our newspaper never had any problems with the judicial bodies. Another evidence of the political pressure is the illegal decree banning the sale and distribution of the newspaper Respublika Business Review Take 2, issued by bailiff Mahmoud Sadikov. Attorney Sergei Utkin says that only court has the authority to do so, adding that in order for laws to work, they have to be followed by everyone. It seems that while reading the law on mass media, the bailiff never made it to the Article 14, which says that the state officials cannot interfere with the distribution of mass media products. The journalists of Respublika also note that in February, during the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, the representative of Kazakh Information Ministry declared printing business in Kazakhstan as independent and having no state leverage over it. Kazakh scientists say the new science bill doesn't stand any criticism. Their opponents, however, believe this is just a case of refusing to give way to the youth. Find out more from the next report. The new science bill has split the Kazakh research community as it proposes to replace the long-standing doctoral and doctoral candidate titles with a common international one, the PhD. Astronomer Victor Tafel believes the proposed reform would lead to the degradation of science. This is the so-called Bologna process and of course we just have to follow the West, which is bad. People defending their PhD theses will be undereducated and will not contribute to the science as much as anyone defending candidates' degree. 
The Bologna process is an open European initiative for the creation of common standards in higher education. The Dean of International Business Academy does not believe it will lead to degradation. Evolution is more likely. PhD grants professors the ability to work and teach abroad without additional verification. The problem is that while striving for the new model, we are losing the advantages of the old model, which is wrong. On the other hand, everyone should be mobile. Both students and professors should be able to freely travel around the world. Meanwhile, the trade union of scientists has found some other reasons for concern, as the document does not say anything about the social protection policies. Nevertheless, the proposed amendments will allow scientists to earn more. The new bill includes articles about basic financing, which covers salaries and other expenses of the institution. All side contracts will now be considered additions to the basic salary. Both professors and scholars agree that the new law must protect the country against the brain drain and scientists against bureaucratic arbitrariness. However, the compromise has yet to be found as the bill is still traveling between the Senate and Parliament. While researchers are talking about the money they have not received yet, Statistics officers continue to investigate where is a part of their budget allocated for the last year's census. On Monday, Yesil District Court began hearings on the second criminal case against the main defendant, Serik Turjanov. One of the criminal cases reviewed by the Yesel District Court of Astana deals with Serik Turjanov. The founder of firm Kiig is charged with power abuse, while he headed the national company Kaskosmos. The criminal case against him was instigated last September by the investigative department of the National Security Committee. According to the case materials, in 2005, Kaskosmos failed to complete two state projects out of nine. Turjanov's spouse said that the accusations are groundless and politically motivated, adding that her husband always criticized the work of senior officials while he was a state employee himself. Evidently, someone did not like that my husband was saying, as he also talked about the law enforcing agencies and that the small-scale business is being pressured. Turjanov's attorney, Venera Nurgaliva, has filed several motions requesting to stop the criminal persecution for the lack of corpus delicti. In addition to Turjanov, the trial involves two former vice ministers of statistics agency. They are charged with the embezzlement of $5 million during the population census of 2009, although the agency has recently changed its suit and decreased the embezzled amount to $4 million.